Hey guys, how's it going? Cheers back again with another episode of the Dortmund career mode here on Xbox One. We're into episode number six and we're starting today with a game in the Bundesliga against Braunschweig. Now before we get into it, if you want to grab yourself some ultimate team coins, check the link in the description. It will take you to footcoinking.com. If you head over there and use the code CHES at checkout, C-H-E-S, you can grab yourself an extra 5% discount off your coins. And of course it's an automated instant service, so you'll receive your coins within seconds. Now Braunschweig aren't the strongest of teams in the Bundesliga and I was hoping to have quite a dominant display. I was starting with a full strong 11 and we're going to get off in fact to an actually very very good start as you can see Henrik Mkhitaryan smashes a ball into the back of the net in the seventh minute and we get off to a perfect start. First chance, first goal. It was a good finish, not the best, probably could have found the corner a little bit better but uh, just the shot power and the fact that it went through a few bodies meant the goalkeeper couldn't see it until the last minute and it flew into the back of the net. Now we're still looking for a couple of additions to the side. Of course in the last episode you guys selected that we should bring in Bernd Leno rather than uh, Mark andre Tersteigen, so we went ahead with that. The other option was something that I asked on Twitter, which was looking for a cam slash striker slash winger slash all three on a budget, because we don't have much money left after bringing in that sub goalkeeper. So we'll be doing that a little bit later on in the episode. But as you can see, I was very, very dominant in these opening stages, but they were going to come close to getting themselves an equaliser just before half-time. Not the best of closing down from me, leads to uh, the man getting free in the box, Cambella, but that is one of the worst finishes you will ever see in a professional game of football and we stayed at 1-0 as we headed into the second half and again trying to uh, extend the lead if we possibly could in the second half just to make sure that uh, you know they weren't going to get themselves back in the game and we could maintain that uh, that winning margin and uh, uh Adrian, almost called him Andre Ramos, and Adrian Ramos uh, comes very close, hitting the inside of the post, and then they scramble it clear. But we're going to put together another nice flowing passing move before Grosskreutz does a nice little step over inside, gives it a whack from 25 yards, and that is a strike and a half. He's normally, or last year, he was a left mid on uh, on Ultimate Team slash in game. Kevin Grosskreutz and this year he's a he's a wing back he's a right back slash left back who can also play at left mid so he's been moved back but he definitely still has those winger traits in him look at that strike bends beautifully away from the goalkeeper right into the corner and now uh, we end up winning the game 2-0 so we get all three points Henrik Mkhitaryan and Kevin Grosskreutz the goal scorers and now we're going to head back into the transfer window to try and get that final signing that we need. That one final missing piece of the jigsaw. Now we've got three players that we're looking at. We've had an offer accepted for Ryan Gold. Like we said, the uh, quote-unquote Scottish Messi. Who in real life has uh, had the chance to uh, to move to Sporting Lisbon from Dundee United. We're looking to perhaps take him away from Dundee United. We had the offer accepted. And uh, we've put a contract in for him. We've also had an offer accepted for, uh, for Bacali as well. The winger at PSV. I know it's a very generic signing. But it's something I wanted to look into. Just to make sure we, uh, we had a guaranteed player that we knew would grow quite well and uh, he's quite good out of the box so to speak so uh, we're going, trying to put an offer in for him we're also trying to work something with Raheem Sterling as well because he's been upgraded because we started on the download latest squad update so he's 79 rated to start off with at the age of 18 I'm actually taking Hornshaw out of the uh, of the bargain and going purely cash of four million pounds so we'll have to wait and see what Liverpool say with that we're sending a couple of youngsters out on loan which actually quite handily frees up an extra little bit of wage budget should we have to uh, to fiddle with the budgets a little bit to make sure that we can uh, we can bring one of the new players in the contract offer from Ryan Gold has been accepted but I still want to hear back from the other two just to make sure that uh, we don't jump the gun and sign someone uh, ahead of time when we could have had a better option as you can see uh, Bacali accepted his contract offer as well but again I wanted to stall just to make sure that uh, we could slash could not uh, you know, have confirmation on whether we could get Raheem Sterling or not. So I still stored with those two deals. As you can see, the offer was accepted from Raheem Sterling, £4 million, and I was expecting him to ask for a little bit more wages. In fact, he just wanted me to match the wages he's currently on at Anfield. So £50,000 a week is more than we could, is less than we can, you know, we're more than comfortable affording that, is what I'm trying to say. And uh, we do, as you can see, basically rinse our transfer and wage project and we bring in Raheem Sterling so unfortunately we have to reject the offers for Ryan Gold from uh, from Dundee United and Bacali from PSV we just simply cannot afford to bring both of them in maybe we'll look at some more options in January if we get some some tournament bonuses especially if we get through the group stage of the Champions League that will free up an extra 10 million pounds that could potentially be uh, be spent in uh, in the January transfer window but we're back to Bundesliga action as you can see we've got Werder Bremen in uh, this is the fourth game of the season now, I think for us, we're kind of one ahead. Everyone else has kind of played one game less than us. I'm not really too sure why. There was uh, an extra midweek fixture that we had at the beginning of the season.
and perhaps it had been moved for uh, for uh, for a cup fixture or something. I'm not too sure. It wasn't something that we were involved in that got it moved. Perhaps it was something with uh, with our opponent. We've come in against Werder Bremen. They're a very very good side. In fact, we played them yesterday in the My Player series at Wolfsburg, and uh, were able to come out with a victory. Actually, scored a hat trick in that one. If you missed yesterday's My Player, then uh, check the channel page for it, and uh, you'll be able to check that video out. Also played Barcelona in uh, the second leg of the uh, the UCL Champions League semi-finals as well. But as you can see, we didn't get off to the best of starts this time. We went 1-0 up against Braunschweig and we went 1-0 down against Werder Bremen. But we weren't behind for long. Piszczek doing the work down the right-hand side after some nice interlinking passes. Stands the ball up. Up goes Adrian Ramos and into the back of the net goes the ball. He's been a fantastic acquisition to the side and I'm really, really pleased with the way he's putting the goals away as well. He's uh, been a perfect replacement for Robert Lewandowski as far as I'm concerned. Really, really pleased with, uh, with how he's been doing in the side but Aaliyah breaks down the left hand side here I can't catch him because he's just too fast he squares the ball and then it hits Socrates on the arm now initially I thought that was a bit harsh but if you watch from the replay you see he just leaves his arm trailing behind him by the letter of the law he is making himself bigger to try and block the cross in which case it is a legitimate handball and uh, it is a penalty so Pettersson is going to step up and he goes straight down the middle hits the top of the bar and comes back out now I wasn't sure so I went to have a look at a replay no goal line technology needed needed though so you can see it does bounce around about a foot outside of the goal it stays at 1-1 they miss their penalty they miss their second chance to go in front so well, we're going to try and actually catch them on the counter attack here Marco Royce has the most ridiculous work rates he tracks back there to win the ball back and then races back up the touchline to go all the way up the other end to send a nice dink ball over to Mkhitaryan I thought about playing it on to Ramos again but didn't decided to turn inside smash it tops with uh, with the Armenian and uh, he brings us in front ourselves rather than falling behind we actually find ourselves with a 2-1 victory or not 2-1 victory 2-1 lead because uh, we definitely aren't done with the goals in this game believe me Church is breaking down the right hand side still not uh, out of the first half even nice Berber spinning sides got a man free there Mikatarin hits it first time and that flies into the top left hand corner that is the best goal that we've scored so far this season Mikatarin scores a belter that's his second of the game and he's fourth in the league so far played four scored four for Mikatarin in the league no played three scored four in fact for Mkhitaryan in the league. It's been fantastic. Really, really good signing. And of course, he was already at the club when we started, but he, uh, he of course, was bought in. He's new this season, but he was bought in prior to the actual starting of the career mode, if you see what I mean. So, uh, pleased with that. Kind of like we had the situation with a couple of Chelsea players when we did the uh, the previous career mode. But Fabio Contre plays a lovely, lofty through ball to, uh, to Ramos. Mistake from the goalkeeper, and he punishes him. Two goals for Ramos, two goals for uh, for Mkhitaryan, and we find ourselves 4-1 up at half-time. We're trying to extend that lead here, but they're going to try and catch me on the counter-attack here. Abraniak's actually going to turn inside the man and uh, then play a nice ball all the way over the top towards the on-running El Hera I brought the keeper out and he got there and then kind of stopped before making the dive which is something that I think they need to address for FIFA 15. The goalkeepers come out and then they have to stop their action to then do the next animation which is really really frustrating. You'll see it, you saw it there, we run out, stopped and then dived and you can see it sometimes, you know when you have a shot that goes across goal your, uh, your goalkeeper will sidestep, sidestep, sidestep pause stand dead still and then dive it's uh, it's just something that needs to be fixed you know with the fluidity of the animations etc for uh, perhaps FIFA 15 although with it being EA it's probably not something they're going to look at but still as you can see we were able to pick up a fifth goal as well come away with a big big 5-2 win and we're going to head into transfer deadline day we've got an offer for Marcel Schmelzer which I'm actually going to reject we are going to use him we are going to need him to be used in a, in the side in a rotation basis with Fabio Coentrell and or Derm so uh, he's definitely staying, as is Ilke Gundogan. I need to keep him on the books. He's our best holding midfielder, uh, youngster to go alongside Sami Kadira. We also get another bid for uh, Nuri Shahin, I checked, and it's pronounced Shahin. I did ask you guys, or you did point it out in the, the previous episode. I went on to a... Uh, um, Oh, what's it called? www.forvo.com. It's actually a pronunciation website that was uh, recommended to me by Hugh Wizzy a few weeks ago. And I forgot about it and went back on it today and I found out that it's pronounced Nuri Shaheen. And the midfielder that I said I thought was pronounced Yoyitz is actually just Yoyitz. So uh, it's Milos Yoyitz. You don't actually pronounce the extra J in the middle. So uh, it's Mila Milos Yoyitz. 
and a new Shaheen. But uh, I will actually check Ilke Gundawan to see if I'm pronouncing that one as well on that website. But as you can see, squad report in the background, just so we can catch up on how things are doing to start the season. Actually, a couple of players have gone up by uh, by one or two overall, which is really pleasing in the opening few games of the season. Shows we're having a good start, which we are. We're uh, we're sat top of the league as we currently sit, but of course, uh, a couple of other teams have got games in hand on us. But that's going to bring this episode to a close. If you want to uh, have a closer look at any of the stats of the players on your screen, then uh, feel free to pause the video at any point and uh, you can do just that. But that's going to bring, as I say, this one to a close. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind. That'd be absolutely super. If we'd hit over 200 again, I'd be really, really pleased with that. You guys have been showing the channel some amazing support. Really, really good support. I cannot thank you enough. We've hit over 100 subs every single day for almost two weeks. It's absolutely ridiculous. It blows my mind. But uh, the channel's doing really well. The series is going really well. The My Player's going really well. There was an episode of that uploaded yesterday. If you missed it, check the channel page for anything you may miss. Whether it's this series, My Player, or Luis Suarez's Road to Redemption, which of course will return again tonight. And uh, for, as for now, that's going to bring this to a close. I know I rambled on at the end like I normally tend to do. Links in the description and on the top right hand corner of your screen to subscribe. Link in the bottom left to the previous episode in this series. If you missed it, links in the description as well to my Twitter and Instagram. And also feel free to check out footcoinking.com if you need any ultimate team coins and be sure to use my code chess C H E S so that they know that I sent you and actually we've been knocked off top spot as you can see by Wolfsburg the team that we're playing for in uh, in the my player series and hopefully trying to win the Bundesliga title with but anyway I'm rambling again it's almost 12 minutes I'm gonna go thank you much very much for watching leave the video a like leave me a comment and I will see you next time